afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, here of Sreif, Defender of the Father, and I'm here to deliver to you a one versus one of the more interesting nature here on the road to Karakov between the North. We got para fighting here for the Soviet Union for the 21st Rifle Division going up versus in the South Talisman fighting for Germany for the Third Panzer Division here we got Kanskos Fort Shock Rifle and Armored Assault Tactics versus Talisman's Elite Troops Mechanized Assault and Lightning War. A machine and gewehr team is awaiting orders. Plenty of controls there for Parrot. For Talisman we're seeing a rather standard MG Grenadier start there as well, so no huge surprises from either side. Noting though he's not interested enough going straight for his fuel point, he's attending up these part initially. And then going the other way. Strange capping order right there from Talisman, to be honest. Also noting at the same time, Parrot is not really sort of directly going for a dime. In this case, he's sort of trying to sort of defend the cut off points a bit by some barbed wire there to deny any easy heavy cover to the enemy. Are they going to be advancing? MD42 is moving up now, pushing up these. They did a slightly peculiar sort of capping order there from Talisman. Overall, not what you'd call very focused or specific. But of course have to see how it works out. More heavy cover there, growing more points, fuel pump being grabbed there. We have more conscripts at our disposal. More conscripts on the way there for Para and more grenadiers for Talisman and for Germany. Deutschland. All quiet so far there, and there we go, first engagement pioneers versus engineers. Looks like the years will have the advantage here should it actually continue, but both units sort of pull away from the other one. Constant moving up and that's definitely meaning the Russians will have the advantage here. The MD42 for example is all the way up here, not supporting what should probably be the sort of main push the main effort. Being the fuel point and surrounding points they're a bit more exposed. So only striking this bit of a peculiar spot to place an MD-42 all on its own. A good assault there, for example, some Molotovs could very quickly flush it out, or perhaps even take it. Gunnadiers moving up, there comes in a few hits there. Shots fired. Ivan's dropping dead, yeah. More troops moving in there, more... F just sort of bleeding out there. No... Huge move there in the engagement. In case the proper on the source cut down, there we go. Holding up the victory point there from the Russians. MP42 just tearing them down with bullet after bullet. Sniper on the way there for Talisman, hoping to bleed out the Russians. Interesting move there, probably more effective has been so as the Americans or the British, but there we go. Sniper against Para, who by the way has now gone for conscript support, opening up there for hit the dirt, so machine guns repairs, rapid conscription, and a bit of incendiary artillery barrages. Talisman is yet to deploy a doctrine, though obviously we won't be seeing anything to Paris there for at least a few more minutes until the, the point hit. Except for the cough point, Hector. not bad then, basically sort of, you know, keeps some to occupy the front line troops. They have Talisman and the MP42 here to go straight for the cough point, which is completely the undefended. Well played there by Para, well played there, realised sort of how Talisman's forces were precariously positioned and took advantage of that to sort of really deny him resources. Very well played. There we got Pioneers with a flammable effort up there, constantly hanging against MD42. Heavy cover there, structure cover there. MD42 will not be able to last. The only, I think, advantage here for Talisman is that power has yet to upgrade for Molotovs, and that could happen anytime soon. In fact, it's going to very soon. Interesting enough, his first research anti tank grenades rather than Molotovs. Slightly peculiar decision there. There you go, MD42 flushed out, and there you go, setting up wasn't quite quick enough to retreat it, but there you go, will retreat. Our oh, way well, that MD42, while he did something, ultimately it was very limited and probably better served, you know, supporting the other frontline troops here. Instead, he sort of rather split up his forces severely. It's not desperately fine to retake the car of from Pioneers and the sniper in next of cover with nowhere to hide for the sniper. And the Pioneers won't be able to screen the sniper for much longer either. So, this is not really a strong tactical position there for Talisman. He's going to have to fall back pretty quickly. And ultimately, that means he won't be able to get his few and cut off point back. No further pressure here. Grenadiers versus Conscript. Conscript moving up here as well. Engineers. Why are they mining there? There we go. Good job there. Good job there. Troops reinforcing. Take up down there for Talisman. He should probably get like to make a nice company up as soon as bloody possible. Enemy forces are securing our territory. 
Points there being grabbed, points being held fervently for the motherland, but uh, my, oh, no, mind you, he's flanking, but they have themselves in a bit of a rubbish condition. There you go, Rafa Grenade gets Corsair, he's splattered across the ground. And ball is there, might soon follow in and to the great big Soviet in the sky. There you go, more far parting for on the right flank. No like the Megana's company up yet here for Talisman, despite having plenty of resources to actually go in that direction. Do we need machine gun upgrades for the Gunners, perhaps? Likely. There you go, Crunch is pushed away. Sniping for two to move ahead. He needs to put up some more pressure there, Mr. Talisman. Parallel on the other hand, just keeps sort of going at his opponent, ever slowly closing in on that. The three command points and the submachine guns are going to go for. And also, Constantly applying pressure here to the cutoff point. Very good, very good. Going to make it harder against the ones here, sort of continue unattended up here, for example. Of course, he gets cut off from his own fuel points. He has to then push for this fuel point, which of course leaves other points than vulnerable to harassment. So it's a rather tricky position. Now, they got a scout car on the way, that would certainly help a bit with all this harassment. Not a lot, but you know, if you were to then, for example, get a second scout crowd, he could possibly just deal with the harassers. Another option would be a half track with some infantry in it, preferably Panzer gun ideas, that way it could very much rapidly react to such harassment and put a lot down to it and so you know quickly move on as well to the front line. And of course I have to see how it works out. And meanwhile the snipers sort of bleeding up the rations of the slowly advance. The power here doing a good job in denying talisman as much fuel as possible. But he's not really responding to the, the push up there on the right flank so far though. Looks like rations are slowly being dispatched now. Support them company up here for power up, but nothing out of it yet. Light to punch a speed wagon, 2 2 2 there, mobilizing, moving ahead at full speed. Wrecking some trees in the process. They're going to tank the 8 2 band, those pioneers nearby, so sort of quickly fix it up. And there you go, half the unit gone there before the 2 2 2 come from an owner and crash from the machine gun. Like they realize, and there's an easy tie, then begin rushing down. Foot, we got a maximum up there for para. You got more Canadians, is enough not to see some Panzer gonna do it. Medic bunker up there in a few moments. Pioneers need to retreat. I fear the 2 2 2 is beyond salvation now. There you go, game switch into 1, but sadly, it wasn't quite able to turn itself into that space. With another victory there for para on a tactical level. Moving up there, could actually, I think. Get off, not too late there, too late there. Look, that's looking back. They could just throw a mortar through the window. Sadly, they could not. We got submachine guns now being held out now to Paris troops. And we got mines going down here around the cutoff point. Not bad at all. Very nasty work there by Para. He's clearly sort of got a good eye on things there, keeping up the pressure, keeping up the harassment, and knowing sort of where to strike. At least for the time being. Meanwhile, further pressure up here on the right flank, MD42, Grenadiers. Lots of something that's having out the PPH 41. A quite popular submachine gun and produced in quite a few million samples. Do you got maximum there versus the MD 42? Maximum no for negative cover and import weapons first off. Shoot, but at the same time it's approached itself. So, could go either way. And as of course there's some Grenadiers flanking, in which case the, well, the maximum would have to pull back. But the MD 42 is also forced away there, so. Getting interesting at the same time, no the some sort of uh, being dealt with. We've got Constant Flank in there. We go up and got a close range for the submachine guns, turning into the Grenadiers, forcing retreat there. Losses. We've got losses here from Talisman by the looks of it. The like Grenadiers was wiped out there by the Russians. Bit of a loss there for Talisman and for Deutschland. Powder keeping up the pressure there, keeping up the harassment as well. Relentlessly so, making so the talisman can Enemy really breathe easily for any point in time. Continuing up there, close one option here could be to go for uh, elite troops and pop a stun grenade, but in this case, the conscripts were a bit slow and helped to sort of really pull it off. But they could have perhaps done it, they've been a bit faster to rush in there against the grenadiers. Perhaps with a bit of an run there going up, but in this case, the grenadiers are suffering up pretty badly and are compelled to leave before they will end up all annihilated. Well, he does. The rest are dead. Beyond salvation. Pioneers flanking in there, using the flan there for to scour the surrounding ground. 
communism. There you go, veterans you two are a bit more lethal, but ultimately too many rations, too many submachine guns, and only a sniper should have really covered him, and he doesn't have a high explosive of the rounds you know, stop the troops there from perhaps guarding the pioneers entirely. One option right now would be Panzer Grenadiers, they would certainly would be a bit of help there, there's all those conscripts, and there we go, we got the Panzer Grenadier moving in, Grenadiers is forced away, overall power still just pushing as many points as possible, someone's got plenty of fuel here, he could easily I think stand to take up right now, so push some armor and vehicles versus Talisman, that would certainly make it very difficult for Talisman to resist, since he is otherwise rather lacking in the anti-tank department. put it mildly, he's got basically only Panzerfausts, and even then he doesn't have munitions to sort of use that. So he's actually in a pretty scary situation when he comes to dealing with armor. At the same time, we got a mortar out here for power, to sort of deal with the dark in Germans, can also be used to lay down smoke screen, which of course is always quite handy. So of course, the question is, will he try and go for some lighter armor right now, some T-70, stations 6 or will he try and sort of play ahead for the mechanized armor campanier, though that probably wouldn't be quite as advisable. Even that field advantage. We've got better off being able to take advantage of the threat, and he's getting a T-70 before then moving ahead. Panzer going to do they're moving out. Tripwire flare mines going down there. We are losing a sector. Rest of the unit covering. Mikhail there as he puts it down. And remember, Mikhail, put it up the right time. Not like last time. It's very awkward. Nice big glowing hole in the ground, you idiot. And he's bringing in there, we got gun gauges up here, hit the dirt. Mortar supporting, here Panzer will continue to fire up, here they go, now they hit the dirt there, giving them basically light cover out in the bloody open. And also pretty sure making sure they can't be suppressed. But in this case they're facing off against Panzer Grenadiers, three man in the building. The conscripts there at that same range won't have a chance there. Best they can do is keep the Panzer going to disoccupied for a bit. At the same time, Molotovs here and Mortar Fire means they're going to easy unless they can so quickly push through, will end up dying out horribly. There we go, Pioneer spawn the Panzer's conscripts filled back towards the heavy cover. That's not really going to work out though. The Panzer still will have the advantage of range and of course they move up close. Uh, he needs to be careful though, he needs to be focused on back there. Talisman has yet to choose a doctor and there we go. Pioneers flanking in, there we go, we could you up, we could you up, there we go, wiped out the entire unit there, lost T-70 arriving here for para, and we got the pack 40 in the way for Talisman, more or less at the same time. T-70 rolling ahead. Conscripts, Maxims, and you need hanging about there. Conscripts need to retreat, they are low on health. One good series of shots, they're on good flank from some conscripts with the submachine gun, and they could end up wiped out. And there we go, we got them moving out there. Oh, going straight for the pioneers and set, allowing the Panzer Grenadiers to escape. And again, he might have been banking on the T-70 to do the job. We got the pack following up there, plants up the Kanoni Fjordsig. T-70 rolling in there on the hunt. He just set up the pack 40 around here, I think. He goes in for it. Will he? Will he? Will Power actually pushes T-70 as far as he can? Well, he's attempt to, and there we go, Pack 40's up, T-70 rolling in, straight into the Pack 40, there we go, good hit, good hit, T-70 needs to get behind it, clear it out quickly. Pulls back, he's done his move for the Panther Pass, but in this case, he does, basically, in this case, Talisman a favour, he moves it in a very predictable manner, allowing just set up and shoot a final shot there, so, had he taken, I think, you know, just driven down here instead, got passed through here, he probably could have gotten the T-70 out there instead, he basically chose to sort of maximize the time there for the ta pack Talisman to get up his pack 40 there and sort of set up and then take the path where he could sort of, you know, easily shoot it down. That's a bit of a mistake there. And send the barrage down. Uh, I don't think there's much to be gained there really. He'd be better off actually, I think, utilizing a rapid conscription, building up a large surplus of men to just keep on with his aggressive tactics versus Talisman. Mortier close being rocked out there by the Indy 42 crew, heroically fighting there from inside the small wooden house. We've got Tech up here, Sopoma Corps going up there for Talisman and for Deutschland. we got another T-70 on the way there for Para, another light tank. Comes there with their PP-41 versus the Grenadiers. Hitting the dirt there. In this case though it's a bit too late, the Contest will really low numbers and health there so... Even with a Molotov. 
That's just basically another wipe there. So right there, Perro might have just gone a bit too confident. He's basically paid a quite steep price for that in men. Punter going to do this thing for there for Germany. Sniper supporting, and there they're going to send the explosive around. Or Bill Battung's Patronen, basically observe around, which I suppose they use to sort of mark targets with, in a slightly more flashy fashion. Christian, of course, will be getting here from the Zaporma Corps, Stug, Ostwind, Panzer IV. Second T center there arriving. It's now over there hanging about. Panzer's moving in. 42 remains there. Still a bit of an awkward sort of setup there. No rule, not one that allows Talisman to actually control this fuel very efficiently. Again, it's showing Parry gets the most fuel. Power will probably actually benefit because he's actually continually flooding a bit of manpower to go for some fuel catches, but otherwise he needs more infantry right now. He marks here from the striking grenadiers, to be careful of course with that pack 40, that Panzer Art Vector Norna. There you go. Need to pull back the T-74, it's too late. And of course there's always the little trick there, just basically popping crew repair to ensure he can actually take a third shot. Rather than just only being able to take two shots before turning into a ball of fire. And death and pain. Piney is there, dispersed by the T 70, 45 minute gun turning into them. And Mine would off there, almost wiping out the entire gun of the escort there. Nice pair for Perra, who continues to float, man. I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking there. We've got mods draining in there, bombs on the MD 42, and ah, incendio armor business against the Max crew. Turn through them, good work there. Torch reinforcing, sitting out. Ah, oh, we got here a mechanized armor company. In fact, once it's done, you can act to get out a T-3476. And Talisman is getting an Ostrand, which is T-3476 effectively very quickly counter. That could be a bit of a problem there for... Uh, oh, sniper caught here with the T-70. Very bad there, very bad. Pack 40 there. Oh! Can he get the sniper caught too late? Damn it, engine. Almost got him, but I fear. Oh. So close. So close. Still floating quite a bit of man, but I would say needlessly because he's going up there. And there we go, using self repair. I think, though, the timing was a bit wrong there, to be honest. Pretty much. Puns is going for the northern fuel there, troops grabbing points, he needs to go for the fuel again. And he needs to get more infantry, I'm not entirely sure if just Paris unsure what exactly direction to take here. Also, get that tank out. That T-34, 76 points have been grabbed. And now we got Talisman there going for an Ostwind, he knows his opponent's going for silver light tanks, meaning he's perhaps not that quite far ahead in the armor game. Plus, of course, with infantry about the Ostwind should do all right there, and of course, they were to get a T-3046, which Paris could do. Of course, the Ostwind will suddenly find itself hard counter, so the Talisman fact might right here have miscounted. But it's time here for the mid-game analysis, country in terms of damage, Talisman's ahead. Kills-wise, he's ahead. No big surprise there in terms of kills anyways. Sadly, again, Parra wasn't really able to get those T-70s really to work for him. He rather threw them away. He got a bit too bit confident there, I think, versus Talisman. That rather hurt him. We could sort of see it here. T-70 down, T-70 down. So despite, you know, having actually quite good uh, map control again, we can sort of see here, there's just been this consistent large manpower float, which he really wasn't able to do anything with. Again, he should have had more infantry out sooner, and apparently thinks he had to utilize that ammunition earlier on a rapid conscription rather than incendiary barrels, you'd probably be much better off there. Point seven again, there's just been this huge map control advantage, but it's sadly not been something that Para has been able to sort of fully utilize. Again, partly due to some uh, slightly questionable armor handling, and I think also a bit unfortunate use of his docks and then their resources available, but also just the manpower float there. I mean, the more resources you float, the more momentum you sort of Offer back to your opponent and more time again to push back. In particular, when you actually have an advantage. And if you actually have an advantage, floating resources is probably one of the worst things you can do. And you very well risk throwing it away if you're not careful. And particularly, then actually suffer some losses here, like Para did. Because then actually put his force at a very sort of low point compared to his opponent. And only made those few units he had left then much more vulnerable. 
which also of course made only the T-70 more easy to deal with for Talisman, since there was nothing to sort of worry about supporting them. Osman then on a rampage, T-34 close against Maxim right now, that's a huge blow right there to Para. Panzer gun it is, they were absolutely annihilated, scorched. Mein Gott, we're burning! What could we ever done to deserve this? He's going to get no rushing forwards, fresh to the field. And immediately encountering the Flak Panzer via Ostwind. Which, I believe, only a 40 or so were produced. Generally, though, most anti aircraft tanks only saw very few numbers of production stroke line along the lines of maybe 40. Maybe 100. I think that was really the most any of them saw, and that was basically, for example, in the Flak Panzer 38T Gepard, for example, that sort of saw those few hundred numbers. Beyond that, though, very low numbers overall. Most mobile anti aircraft guns have been on half tracks or trucks. I mean, more of that were just basically towed. There you go, T-34 striking against the Osman. The Osman clearly not prepared for this. Of course, Talisman probably not prepared for it at all. And one option we probably can get is actually calling him Stumke should still transport, but I do believe the Osman's going to go down though. Before he can be saved. It's an explosive round there, doing a nice bit of damage to the country, could still rush at the snow. In fact, looks like they go straight for him. Puts him up. He's talking part with the Osman to save the sniper! Oh, no, no, he's talking part with the Osman to kill the sniper! <laughs> oh, he got it, he got it, but that would have been really, you know. Both players were too occupied with what's going on there to sort of just see the situation there with the sniper and the constable with the submachine gun. That would have been really awkward. <laughs> there you go, T fit from them. We got the Stooks still moving in. Again, we see here Parafitting very confident. Might be able to get that pack forward. He still needs to be careful. He needs to be careful. He needs to support it. He needs to get some troops there again to push for the car point. And of course, he doesn't know about the Sturmgeschut, so. I mean, he could try and just sort of knock out the pack 40 and then sort of get hit by the Stug if he's not careful. He almost got the pack 40 crew. Veteran drawn for the T-54. There you go, he got a Panther fast off. He lingered too long. And now he's in fact caught at a quite decent distance there with the damage engine in front of the pack 40. And again, there's no infantry about to support because he's been floating manpower continually. He doesn't have anything that can rush over to the T-54. To support it. And now we got the stronger shots out here for Talisman. We have lost an MG team. MG42 though was lost right there. That's actually a harsh loss for Talisman. He's got a maxim, but uh, Oh well, Stormgish is rolling hit there. Can't up there to repair the T-34 a bit late there, a bit late, they probably should have more. Can't scoops not attack the fast enough repairing the T-34. Are we moving in there from the south? The machine gun first shot misses. Got in him, Reinhardt. Where did you learn to shoot? This is not a German way. And we go, almost got it, almost got it. It's actually close to victory, too, there, but there you go. Kaput. Rude up. A good start there for the Sturmgeschutz crew. Pioneers, they're gaining veteran to three Molotovs on them, though. More snipers on the way there for Talisman. Looking to the firing line of Pendle Machine Gun and the Strunk issue starts out a bit of anti entry fire, firepower further on. And there we go, we got the T 70 on the way, we got a Maxim on the way. Interestingly enough, he's not going for the T 35, he's going for the T 70, and he's not getting a field gun either. Curious set of priorities there. I suppose he just doesn't feel the Strunk is very much of a threat, in which case he is to be. Sorely surprised. Do not worry, Dimitri. It has no turret. It is only lowly stuk. What could they do to us, the mighty Soviet army? Straight into Maxim. Great start there to the assault, pinned and suppressed. And gives quick check for them before two can actually flank the Maxim. Stuk supporting a machine gun and main gun. T-70 flanking in the pioneers without trouble. Do quickly orders only to shoot at the uh, vehicle to turn against the T-70. Good hit there, good hit. Almost got the pioneers, but at the same time remains with the Narc 5. The Stuke, Ah, Stuke misses! Reinhardt! And now MD4 they're actually tying apart the Max, but getting torn apart with the gun. It is up close, mortified, bringing down Max, pushed away. Panzer gun, it is arriving here alongside a sniper. He's now in the front here. T-70 
Thiessen pulling back for repairs. Maxim setting up to scrap Victor Pawn's Acti Guard. Now three machine guns. Two of them, Maxims. Maxim, not frightfully effective as the Stug. Maxim in a bit of trouble there. Stug flanking in with machine gun main gun. Gonna do the setting up. And maximum from the tree there, you get a good hit there. So you can actually hit something for once, Reinhard. Be strong, comrades! Even if you're hit by an armor piercing ram, you will survive if you believe in the might of the Soviet Union. See if any appears right from this duke. Pushing it slightly, there we go, almost went to one in the strongest should cool. Field gun has also arrived there, this is three. Additional field gun. He also had a regimental field gun by the same calibre, but notably smaller barrel. In fact, it was basically like the German light to see from Zika shoots. In terms of function and support. As this field gun sort of double as an anti-tank gun, but one thing to note that was I believe only half of the barrel was sort of rifled. The Germans, on the other hand, were the ones to capture that would actually fully rifle them out and occasionally mount them on Marders, which for some doing North Africa, of course the British to believe they actually managed to take uh, 88 mm guns and sort of mount them on vehicles. They were quite afraid of that. Maximum setting up support the super gun, another incendiary barrage in there, no utilization of rapid conscription. I wouldn't really say that was an amazing use of incendiary barrage either. I mean considering his overall situation, I do think you should consider some rapid conscription. I also think you should consider getting out some more tanks. Or perhaps a tank destroyer. Are oh, they pants for their rhyming four? Talisman, and there we go. Stutz claims another panzer for Germany. Five kills, two of the vehicles. Vets and two one, yeah. Our opponents are seizing a sector. T-34 and six on the way there for Para. Panzer four halfway down there for Germany. And overall maintaining good control here as well. Palace finding himself in a lot of trouble again. That manpower float really has proven to be a bit of a problem. Maxim out there in the open, though, versus going to do some light machine guns. Sniper. Not exactly a good spot to be caught in. And they are rapidly suffering severe casualties. There we go. Panzer come back and mobilized. Could throw in a pit mark machine gun on that as well. Panzer was here holding by the Maxim. He's engaged, kind of needs to for the South Gun to grab that fuel pot. Panzer will support would be good, and there he goes. Panzer will machine gun, Panzer will rush out the engineers. They're about to die horribly. There he got wiped out. Power has very well extended himself, perhaps a bit too much more than his forces can actually carry it, and they are suffering quite severely for it. In particular, now that Talisman does have more formidable infantry with more support, in particular, vital panzer support. More to clear out. That's going to hurt Paragrime, in particular, if Talisman actually managed to grab it. There you go, T-54. Oh, sniper call right in front of it. Misses, though. And there he goes to engage. He's got a target weak point. Shoots a heat on Reinhardt. Savvy go. Can't shoot the gun now, can he? Here goes setting up there. T-54 needs to get out there. No, he stops up! Oh dear! Oh dear, there we go, another T-54 down there. Stu claims another kill for Germany. And some shoots. That was definitely not the best armor handling there from Para. And the field gun was sadly too late to support the T-54. I'm not entirely sure what happened. Of course, this is your dot that we just sort of only briefly clicked. I mean, just sort of small parts, which you just ordered to sort of fully reverse move up here. That one moving ahead right past the field gun, comes there, going to get off an anti tank grenade. Problem is, I was to say be too early since there's not enough damage to really cause an engine damage on the Panther. Full stooping repair, conscious maximum in there. Being a bit rough here for Para. He gave himself another T-34 ready though, but he needs at least another field gun to support the counter trajectory. M-42 there, finding on his only got Panther forward, finally supporting. Field gun east out flank here for the German Panzer crew. No, enough to support it. Anti-tank grenade already thrown. He's got nothing else to throw at it at the moment. Field gun crew dead. T-34 
Chief hit for some six number three on the way. Maxim versus Grenadiers. We got of course the two first body as well. There we go. Damage engine on the Panda Four. Sadly, he's got nothing to really further take advantage of that. Or oh, Pioneer's pushed away. Suffering too much. Now playing Maxim moving up. Overall pushing at several fronts here. And Tanner's been so far succeeding quite nicely since every most of the push at least are supported by some kind of armor. Now Paris just out to three machine guns and three infantry units. Seven kills on the Sturmgeschutz, yeah. Look, it's his Reinhardt, even you can be a hero of Germany. On the Eastern Front, in the Defeat for some six, number three done. Now the machine gun on the way from Talisman, so he's adding in some more machine guns as well. There we go. Yuri, dead. For the might of the storm gishots. Wrecking the mortar here, at least a Timmy 2, and there we go. T-34 Max and Constant Control supporting it by the looks of it. Duke begins to fire away at the constant machine guns, blaring down main gun bombarding. There we go, another kill. It's now getting killed. There we go, T-34 moving in. Stu corner pitted up position, anti tank grenade. Into early, flank it. No, don't stop in front of it. Ah! Target weak point! Flank the stu! Flank it once it gets veterancy! At least looks like the C-34 is in 76 this time actually managed to escape the wrath of the Sturm Bishop the Stu is already halfway to veterans defeat. Paris position is getting increasingly precarious. And he started out so well. Country under fire, Stu Panda 4 engaging violently. Fun fact about Stukes is the war progressed to increasingly used in a variety of roles besides just assault gun. I mean, some actually put into sort of tank destroyer battalions, which has caused some people to believe it was exclusively a tank destroyer. It was, because by same logic, then it's also a panzer, because it would also put into panzer battalions wherever they needed panzers. In particular, the Stu 4 was actually used quite a bit in that regard. But again, this sort of highlighted part again. The utility of the Stu, but also just a situation where they basically were lacking in equipment there throughout the war. Now that things were. Oh, Max will be at trouble there. More kills from the stronger shots. Goes here for these inside. Max and conscripts. But again, very little anti tank support here from Para. Again, floating manpower once more. Could at least consider another T-34, or perhaps an HD-5, or some SU-76, but there we go, another T-34 there on the way for power up, hands rolling towards the east. Stug, almost ready. <laughs> grab the point there, grab the point there. But acquired here, Talisman's over in a pretty good position. You could consider laying down a bunch of mines and just got the munitions for it. So like machine guns, T-54 almost done. There you go, an additional T-34 rides here for the motherland to support the 21st Rifle Division to hold the line and repulse the fascist invader. Pushing west side. We've got bankers going up for Tunnels, man. Again, he's preparing defenses. He's aware now he's probably can't push them off much farther ahead. There's a need to prepare. Stoops quite below there. Hands following in as well. Machine gun sending up there. Not a bad idea because he chose to suppress the defenses sort of around there. We've got machine gun. We've got incendiary barracks. We've got none going to need. Keep the force rolling in. Hands are full. Not enough field guns. There you go. Stu engaged. Stu engaged. Need to keep moving. Need to keep moving. Pack 40 sending up. Cax in the. Uh, T-34 there, shot slightly bouncing off there. And there we go, one T-34 down. There you go in front of the pack 40s and the Stu. And the T-Panzer 4, and there we go. 
And with that, Parrot Spirit is broken alongside the 21st at Eiffel Division, and they are pushed away. A victory here for Talisman, a victory for Germany, though initially didn't look like that due to the very well-played, aggressive play there from Parrot. The problem was, basically, once he sort of hit the mid-game, there was some kind of stumble. He wasn't sure what to do. And part began floating a bunch of manpower, which basically allowed Talisman, who was clearly much more focused on sort of pushing into the mid and late game, to so, you know, push back with armour, though he probably misjudged Parrot there with the Ostwind. But was able to bounce back for the Stu partly again, thanks to also Para having some slightly dubious armor play. Sort of, you know, didn't support it properly, and all had a slightly tendency of taking some of the paths that generally would get it very quickly in front of an anti tank gun and right. So he needs to work down his armor preservation sort of armor work. Otherwise, I mean, he's just going to keep having this repeated a bit more again. Doctrinally, I would have think he would also benefit more from rapid conscription times rather than incendiary artillery barriers. I mean, just being able to hit with more infantry that way, you know. Building up advantage that way would also be good, and more mines would also have benefited him. So, I mean, those are some of the things that's worked on for power. For Talisman, he should all have been more focused. I mean, he was a bit too silly in his slip shot here and there. And overall, I mean, he didn't do much to sort of defend the fuel point. Had power played much more sort of focused and with a better, more clear strategy in mind. I think Talisman would actually been quickly and been pushed away. But again, because power wasn't focused, Talisman was able to bounce back. But. It was a bit of luck for Talisman there that he had such an opponent who fumbled a bit there again. Otherwise, that could have very well been GG 20 minutes earlier. Or 15 to 10 minutes earlier, anyways. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gave you to your matches. If it did, why not subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. If not, send in a replay on it. Provide some feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Dancing. Cheers, and thank you all for watching. Bye.